Hi there. So in this video, I'm, I'm going to talk about notebooks. Uh, I'm going to cover off uh, accessing, sort of creating, using them in ArcGIS Online primarily, and then just show you how you sort of use them from ArcGIS Pro as well. So you can use them uh, in both those environments. And of course, if you've got Portal, uh, Arch, Arch Enterprise and stuff, uh, you, you, you can have notebooks uh, as well. So they're, they're, they're certainly part of the Esri uh, ArcGIS family. Key thing to think about with uh, notebooks is that, um, well, first of all, what, what, what are they? Um, so they're just a way to kind of share um, through a sort of web-based interface, share um, the, the creation and the live execution and visualization of um, your, your analysis. And in this case, it will be um, with Python code. So what Esri have done actually with notebooks is actually is is effectively embedded an open source environment, and that's what you're seeing here on this link. And I'll have all the links um, about Python, Jupyter, um, uh, notebooks, uh, and and the uh, and that sort of thing in the description. And you can read up here if you like just what what's what notebooks is sort of uh, all about and where it's from. That's the background to it. So it's Esri building on top of. Um, some open source and make it accessible. Um, this this note, notebook um, sort of software uh, make it accessible in ArcGIS and ArcGIS Online. So there's some good documentation in Esri. I'll put that link in there. And we're going to be using a bit of Python, not not loads. This isn't a Python session, but it will give you some good uh, pointers about how to do certain things, such as check uh, when users were last logged in, and so you could remove them. Um, create buffers within a notebook and schedule that, all, all that sort of thing we will be covering. So even if you know a bit of Python, this is still worth watching. And if you don't know anything about notebooks, certainly um, it's it's worth watching this video. Uh, actually, even if you know a bit about notebooks, I think it'll still be worth it. I'm sure there'll be a few things you, you may not be aware of. So um, if we go sort of straight into it, from ArcGIS Online, you will have this notebook option up here you got the other ones um, now when um, you, you, you have this when you've clicked on uh, this notebook uh, link it'll give you various uh, details about what example notebooks what shared notebooks you've got haven't got any and there's loads of sample ones which are really good this is really worth uh, looking through these but it's good to get a basic sort of hello world view of this so you know it precisely what's going on and what's happening. And also about the charging with regard to credits. So we're going to just sort of jump straight in and create some basic um, uh, notebook. Now, when you go to new notebook, you'll see it has standard, advanced, and advanced with GPU with a graphic um, Presses unit, uh, the GPU. So th this, these two bits you can see below the standard are chargeable, and you do you do sort of have to think about that if you sort of you know if you're Python developer import ArcPy and that sort of thing and using sophisticated uh, tools uh, tool sets then you're going to pay more for it, especially when you're using GPU support. It says quite clearly ideal for intensive workflows such as big data analytics or data mining and stuff. Uh, modeling so you, you're going to be paying 30 credits an hour for that so so do be wary of this um, standard is free standard is free apart from storage there's a very tiny sort of fraction of a credit storage cost and also uh, apart from scheduling if you want to schedule and run then there's a sort of per minute charge so we're going to go straight to standard because this this is for light work um, administrative type word. I, you know, I'm going to be doing a bit on um, user, uh, looking at users, and also uh, that sort of bit of buffering work, just to show you some Python and, and how to do a buffer and, and how it all works within a notebook. So I'm just going to be doing those things which don't need heavy uh, analytics. So it's going to fire up a uh, effectively a container on this um, ArcGIS Online environment. So you're going to get your own little area to run Python in, let's call it. Um, it'll all sort of provided for you. So here we go. Um, this is your environment. It's running Python 3. The uh, Now, there's, there's lots of menu items here. Some of them are very obvious, help, etc. 
and they'll give you talk about keyboard short, shortcuts and stuff and go direct to references which is really useful go straight to Python reference IPython that sort of thing that's great um, and you, you know feel free to play around with with those uh, at, at sort of will but we'll, we'll, we'll and to jump into these we'll we'll just do a bit of um, coding on a straight away bit of Python so notice how it's come up with this so that's the kind of base that you need without that you're not really going to get much to run um, possibly you know some basic Python but we, we're using GIS so when, when you click on a cell you see these are called cells so when you click on one you can hit the run button and that puts a little asterisk there you see the asterisk the star that means it's running and executing and then bang it's done now I've got a red thing here saying you know look you are actually logged in as administrator here so you could do some serious damage that's really what it's saying and um, you might be better off creating a different type of user role for this well you would be you would be and you certainly uh, developers and stuff would, would have a different login but I'm going straight in there sort of administrator uh, role so I can um, I can you know, delete users change roles or all, all that sort of thing that's why it says this red warning it is a warning it's not stopping me from doing anything so let's get straight into it let's, let's do something with respect to Arches Online so let's let's find out who I am. So me, myself, and I equals gis dot users dot me. Okay, and let's print that. Me, myself, and I. So we don't have to click on that again because that's already executed. We can click on the next cell down and run it. And there we go. Username just go maps. So, where have I got all that from? What's this GIS, uh, GIS uses me um, malarkey? Well, if you look in the API reference, you'll see that you have uh, some very good um, documentation here, actually. The link will be in the description. And I can look at users um, and pick up all kinds of uh, details, username, um, all, all kinds of things. So, if you just look in the documentation, you'll find out um, you know, all about what you can get from you know what properties um, you can pick up from user accounts and stuff uh, for example last login that's the one I'm going to actually go for last login so let's go back to note uh, to the um, notebooks we'll find it eventually um, so I just I just did that uh, so let's deal with um, something I've already created and I'm just going to copy and paste now after you, I've copied and pasted this into a new cell. So you see it has one, two. So this is obviously going to become three. Now, I paste it into a cell. And, that, and that's one thing you have to appreciate with this environment, what's going on. We're running these sort of cell by cell. But these two above have been run. So this variable, me, myself, and I, has been populated and is available to anything else that runs in this um, notebook, any cell. And it'll just run so um, and and it'll just work so what, what, what have I done here I've said last log logged uh, last logged in so that's my variable equals me myself and I because that's a uh, uh, GIS users dot me uh, dot login which like I said I've got from the um, this module the user module so let's go back um actually I haven't saved this yet have I? I'll do that after this now it comes back in, last login is uh, in milliseconds, you know, Unix epoch or whatever it's called. So I'm gonna, I want seconds. So I'm gonna divide by a thousand. Um, then I'm gonna populate this uh, by picking up from date time module, um, the timestamp, and that's gonna turn those seconds into a valid actual last login date. It's actually gonna turn a date. Now this is gonna generate an error. And I'll do that deliberately just so you can you can see what's going on here. So if I click on this and run, it'll come up with, well, what's this date time stuff you're talking about? At the, what we've got to do is bring in, just as in normal Python, you've got to bring in the modules. So I'm going to import the date time sort of library thing. So I'm just going to put that in there at the top. So now I'm going to click on this cell again and run. Okay, so now that's run. And it's brought brought in date time. So now when I run this again, 
there it goes I've now got the answer now you can imagine that's a date type so I can do just knock yourself out with what you want to do with that is it is it older than 30 days from now you know whatever and then do stuff so that that's a that's a really simple sort of thing to show you and um, uh, just to sort of get going and it might be useful for actually especially if you're in a corporate and you've got um, tens hundreds definitely thousands of users where you want to analyze user accounts and stuff so um, and of course I can just take all this copy or cut and put it into that cell and then just get rid of that cell so now put it into that block and then just click on this I don't need to click on the one above again and click run and you see how it's actually updated that number to six so that's the sixth thing basically run six process and it's come up with the answer so it's come up with the username because I've got that print in there and it's coming with the last login date because I've got of that um, that print in there as well so let's put it directly underneath um, a neat thing you might find useful is shift L you see it puts line numbers shift L I'll leave them on and to um, and, and that, that's really handy and if you click on this button here open the command palette you can see very quickly what all the short, shortcuts are and stuff it's in help as well but this just you know sort of brings you uh, um, quickly and I think if you just type line yeah there you go uh, toggle all line numbers shift L you see so it's that's that's pretty handy really let's save this yeah so let's do a file save as so we're in Art Just Online here. Let's call this demo notebook. Ooh, Demjo. Um, let's put a tag in there of demo. Oh, I've already got a tag there. Uh, whatever. Save it in the sandpit. So this this is actually in Art Just Online. So this is saving it in basically the cloud. It's uh, AWS and is using up storage. Very very tiny storage. Um, very very tiny but it's still using up storage and that's certainly something you need to consider so let's do one other thing let's um, let's run this uh, oh one, one thing to know is when, when a good test before you do anything especially if you want to ske schedule this as a task maybe it runs every week to check last logins you want to do a um, kernel is it a kernel well there's restart and run all certainly cell there you go cell run all but note we could run all above run all below that sort of thing i'm going to do a run all so that forces execution of everything no errors so this is working fine that's great i'm just going to now i'm going to copy and paste this um little statement a couple of statements here including a print statement that picks up the available credits so available credits equals me myself and i dot available credits so that dot available credits like i said came from here, there you go. Came from this uh, documentation here, so it's all good. And uh, now let's run that. Uh, so it's 400. Uh, so I've actually got more credits than that, but I've got a quota. I've actually got a quota on my own account, so I force it to only be 400 credits as, an, as a maximum. So I use this sort of budgeting tool there in Archis Online, which is quite handy. So you could work. You, you can see how you could, you know, work and, and do stuff. Okay, let's just do just a bit more on this, just to push it a bit further. I'm gonna save this actually. I'm gonna push it a bit further. So here, what you what I've done is just create a very simple Python um, function here. Uh, print hello string. Um, it gets um, some string passed to it, and whatever string passed to it, it concatenates the word Doug at the end of it. It just adds Doug and returns what, whatever that is. Very simple. And if I click on it and run it, it won't do anything because I've not called it. So let's call it print hello string um, and then just pass it hello and we should get hello Doug. So let's click that and run it. Hello Doug. Excellent. That works. What you might do just to keep things a bit tidier, a bit of housekeeping, I suppose, is to highlight this cell and press the up button and just move it up near the top. Probably makes sense to do that. You know to to have your functions above you know at the top there declared um, it just makes sense for me at least anyway I'm, it's, it's a good way so I can still run it if I click on it there you go it still works so that's a good good way to uh, sort of um, stretch things out uh, again you might want to do a run all cell run all just make sure it all works hangs together yep it's all good um, now 
about one final thing on this is to just to show how see me myself and I there which was declared in this process 10 um, and accessed in this process 11 now I'm going to pull that in and use it with this function so print hello string hello plus whoever me myself and I is um, plus um, who is actually um, yeah who is actually because it's going to put Doug at the end of it isn't it so and there you go hello that's my username who is actually Doug because Doug is there so um, there you go so there's some nice simple things to get to sort of get you going I hope uh, with notebook there's there's still quite a few other things to come that I'm going to show because I want to show you the geometry side of things as well within this